What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So I haven't given y'all an update in a while We're on uh, old project patches here, my 69 Chevelle. Um, so I know the last video I posted was all the carnage of the previous um, fabricator when they were trying to change some sheet metal. And a lot of the stuff I've been doing is there's tons of videos of it on, on it online as far as changing skins and changing full pans and doing body work and stuff. There's a billion videos online, so I didn't really bother to try to show you some things. Um, I will show you, I will do a video as far as going through, like putting, the, installing the trunk pan in three different pieces and this, that, and the other. But, you know, as far as everything goes, uh, the Chevelle, I've just been doing uh, body work on it, pretty much changing the sheet metal. Um, I haven't really done anything different to the chassis other than I put some new valve covers on that big block boy. Look at that right there. That thing right, sexy lady. And I, I haven't even finished doing the uh, the, the transmission um, um, cross member install yet. I, I, all I got to do is pour 15 it and it'll be done. So anyway, guys, um, I'll show you what my progression has been. I'll show you what I've got going on with the car, my ideas and what I plan on doing with it. Um, and I want to, and I'm kind of debating on a paint or putting a wrap on it. Um, I'm really kind of leaning toward the wrap because the paint's gonna be very expensive up front. I think I could put the wrap on it for like $2,500 to $3,000. Um, the paint that I'm wanting to use and the color and the, and the clear is gonna probably be $10,000 or something like that. So I'll probably do a wrap. So you guys in the comments, let me know what you think about that. Um, if you've had good experiences, bad experiences with wraps and stuff, but I've got a very distinct idea of what I want to do. But anyway, guys, I'll share that for another day. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and check this out. All right, guys, here's patches. So I have started doing a firewall delete, and this is only part of it, um, and it's only kind of mocked in. It's not really done yet because I've got some work up here to do on the upper cowl panel. And um, this, uh, this lower panel here, I've got to do a bunch of repairs on the bottom. I'm trying to get the lower vent panel. I'm trying to get to um, order these, but they've been on back order for like a year and you just can't get them. So I'm thinking about just going down in here and showing you the damage. So going down in here, making cuts and putting some sheet metal in and just weld it in myself and just try to see if I can't fix some of that stuff and then redo some of this stuff on the bottom here that was kind of jittery. But anyway, um, I have repaired this. This was really chopped up bad. Um, it needs to be finished, but I just cut a piece of metal and installed it and fixed this here. As y'all guys can see, I put this full pan in. Um, I've got the wheel tub currently out. I'm gonna take the wheel tub out the other side because I've got to widen this thing probably two inches or more and all of that stuff. Um, I did manage to get the uh, outer warehouse panel in and I've been working on straightening up this, this uh, this rear quarter um, from the last video you've seen that there was a great big dent gouge in here. I managed to work that out with my body hammers, um, but you know, you just can't get all the little dings and dings out of it. So I just skimmed it with a little thin coat of Bondo to try to get it to smooth out. Um, also, I have changed out this entire, I've changed out this entire, uh, wheel well right here on the outer edge here I've changed all of that and matter of fact i even cut out if you go back and look at my other video you'll kind of see where this was all chopped up real bad i've actually cut it out put a new piece in i'm finishing it up um i've deleted the rear turn signal all right and uh and i've also come here and i've deleted the drip rail off the side of the car completely deleted it out and i come through here and i got all this lead out and I restructured it with metal and I'm just skimmed it with a little bit of bond excuse me guys with a little bit of bondo to try to get this thing to smooth up a little bit. Um I did change this floor pan, I changed the front floor pan, I changed this floor pan, and I changed that floor pan. I've changed all four of these. I'm still yet to change the rear pan here. I still need to fix that. I still need to fix this up here. Um the rear speaker. Um, I forgot what they call it, but it's where your speakers and all your mess goes, your accessories and stuff like that. Uh, I have managed to fill a bunch of these holes that were drilled in here. I got a brand new panel to put this on, um, but you see how ugly that is, but I'm going to get rid of all of this. I'm going to put a new panel. I got a brand new one, new trunk lid. And as you guys can see right now, I'm putting new 
I've got my new trunk pan in here. Um, I haven't mocked it up yet, but I want to just show you what I'm dealing with here, guys. This is the factory floor pan. This is some sheet metal, okay? They put this sheet metal on top of the factory floor pan, beat it in place, cut it in a couple spots, and welded it in. So this thing is welded in a bunch of different spots. That's really kind of hard to get to. I mean, look at here, it's all up under there and stuff where I've had to cut. So I've got to pretty much cut everything out all the way around here, cut all that out all the way up to there. You kind of see where I've already started kind of cutting it to get it cut out. And I've got to cut outside this wheel well here and I've got to change that entire floor pan, including the, uh, the straps on the bottom, the supports, uh, the fuel tank straps and the supports. And I need to take this wheel well out. Um, on the driver's side, I mean, I see a bunch of cancer here. I ain't even touched yet. I ain't even going to, I'm just going to have to probably end up putting a new panel down in here. Um, this quarter, I'm just going to have to just take an L on it. Um, as you can see, I'm going to have, to, this here probably ain't so bad. I could probably repair that. But this, this right here, man. Oh my God. There's no way. So. I'm gonna to have to put a whole new skin on the outside of the car from here to there. And you got to see where these random holes where they tried to pull the dent out, but it didn't pull. And I've got, I'm gonna delete this, this drip rail. Over here, I, I thought about repairing this, but I really don't think I can repair it. The damage is pretty much just too much, so I'm gonna to have to put a lower vent panel on here. Um, but I did manage to clean up some of this stuff and I repaired this here. This here was really tore up pretty bad, so I repaired it. Um, as you can see, I've got a lot of repair stuff to do here. Um, but anyway, that's what I've done so far with patches, guys. Um, I did manage to uh, give you an update on the chassis. I, I really, like I said, I haven't really done much to it because um, it's pretty much done. Um, I did put a... Um, I, 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 a quick turn gearbox in it. So that's one of those quick turn, I think it's 12 to one or something gearboxes um, to, to give you that uh, attack on the, on the, uh, with the way the wheel, it take, don't take so many turns to get a full lockout on both ways so it'll have a real good handling. Oh, I did uh, get a, an injection system for this, for this big block. I was gonna run a carburetor and then I got to thinking about how much I really want it to drive. So I ended up picking up this, Fitech Go EFI 1200 horsepower capable EFI system that I'm gonna mount on top of that bad boy. And I did manage to pick up this Aeromotive A1000 fuel pump. And uh, there was a carburetor. <laughs> but anyway, um, here's an Aeromotive A1000 fuel pump that I'm gonna mount on this car, on the car. Um, so, those, that's going to happen pretty soon. Um, as soon as I can take the gas tank, I've got to put a um, a, uh, a bill in it, a belly, so I can put some external hoses in it, external uh, fuel pump, and the lines that go out from there, two dash 10 lines coming out of the stock tank. I'm going to just weld a little sump in there that's got the two fittings attached. Um, the big block, I do know one thing, these headers, so these headers are 69 Chevelle, big block Chevy 396 heads, I mean 396 headers. Um, I bought them, they got two inch primaries and a three inch collector, right? I found out that you have to put that header on before you put this motor in. You have to undo the motor mount, bolt the header onto the engine, then set the engine in there because you cannot get, I've even trimmed the ears off my 4L80 there, but you have to get that thing to lay in there before the engine is put torqued down. You have to kind of tweak it in there. And I don't know if that's right or not. I mean, I bought these hookers from from uh, Summit, hooker headers. They fit great on the motor itself, but they just don't quite get inside this hole right here. It's kind of tricky. So for any of you big block guys who want to do this stuff, and I've got aftermarket A-arms, so I've got even that much more clearance, but it was still a pain. Um, I'm using a factory distribution block down here, but I've run all new stainless steel lines all the way through the car. Um, so it's like, for some reason, that header don't quite want to lay in there. So I did figure out that you have to jack the motor up on this side. So anyway, um, for right now, this entire chassis, engine, uh, transmission, 
the wheels and tires set up, the brakes, all that stuff is done, the rear end's done. Um, I just need to get the drive shaft cut to the transmission and I got to take that transmission part, make sure everything looks good. And, I, and Fitech actually makes a transmission shift module for the 4L80 to go behind this motor. Um, so I'm going to put a transmission shift module in it so I can control the transmission electronically at the same time I'm controlling the Fitech. And also the Fitech I have comes with, it, it can use this MSD distributor to control the timing and the curves on this big block. So that's going to really be cool during the, uh, this is going to be really cool for street driving because it'll have, you know, cold starts and all that good stuff. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, but anyway, guys, that's what I've got going on right now. So when I go to put that trunk in, I might even, I might even shoot a little video of me cutting out the rest of it. It's been a real pain in the ass. Um, I mean, like on a different level, pain in the ass. It's one thing to cut out old rot. It's another thing to cut out somebody else's really crappy sheet metal work and their bubble gum welds. Um, Sawzall blades don't really do well through gum, bubble gum. And I can show you a perfect example of that right up here. Plus I'm cutting through uh, two layers of 18 gauge metal. But anyway, these bubble gum welds like right here these big welds right here. I've got to come in here with that saws on, cut through that stuff. I've actually tried to do it with a whiz wheel, and I can get some of it with a whiz wheel, but this thing is absolutely atrocious in every way, man. I mean, you can see where I've cut there, and there's a factory floor pan on the back side of it, if you want to focus. There it goes. See, there's a factory floor pan, and then they just put a piece of old galvanized sheet metal over top of it and beat it in. So I've got to cut all of this out with a saws all, and then trim to try to make these the new panels fit. It's been a freaking complete mess, guys. And also, look at this crap here, man. Just complete trash. So I'm probably gonna have to live with that and just blend it down and make it look good. Um, this as well, probably. I'll have to see um, once I go try to mount the bumper on the back. And the, uh, once I go to try to mount the bumper I'm across the back here and then put the, uh, the, the light holders I forgot what they called them things, them little things that sit on there with the tail lights going in. I can't remember what they're called, but anyway, when you put those in, you can kind of see how this or orientates with the chassis itself. I mean, not with the setup on the back with your gaps and stuff. So I've got to mock it to see if I have to change that panel. So that's going to be a pain in the butt too. Also, I've got to try to fix some of this stuff here. But this quarter panel, I'm going to have to change the whole quarter just for the simple fact that they went into this style line here. They drilled some holes to try to pull pull it out, and then they cut and welded this freaking dookie patch in it. And it would take at least a half inch of bondo just to make that right, if I were to keep it. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to get rid of that and come along here and just put a like they make a skin that comes right on the inside of this seam, and just put that skin that whole skin on um, and skin this whole thing. That way I can put my brand new. Uh, outer uh, wheelhouse panel in and then I can come in here the same as I'm doing this side and put wheel tubs in. So anyway guys that's the update for patches. Uh, I hope you guys have a good... You got your hand in your pocket? No, I got two hands in my pocket. You like to come look at big truck and big garage? Big truck and big garage? Yeah, garages and big trucks. I'll tell you what, it's the best this, thing. This is the best thing garage door ever. That's the biggest garage door ever. Yes, I like Press the button. Press the button. Yes. 